You can't think of reality TV and not think of Niniti and Monique Leakes, formerly called Nini for short. She's a television personality, actress, presenter, and boutique owner who rose to fame as the breakout cast member of The Real Housewives of Atlanta, which premiered on Bravo on October 7, 2008. She's one of the highest paid reality stars with an estimated net worth of over $14 million and has appeared on Broadway and launched her own clothing line and boutique. But what if I told you that Nini amassed all of this wealth and fame because of two things that I think she herself did not know would even walk in her favor at the time. This is the story of Nini and how she became an accidental marketing icon by just being her true authentic self. But before we get into it, don't forget to press like and subscribe to the channel if you want more mini documentaries, marketing psychology, launching and business strategy videos. Lynette and Monique Leakes was born in Queens, New York in 1967. She had a difficult childhood as she was sent to live with her aunt in Athens, Georgia when she was four years old. She dropped out of high school and worked as an adult dancer under the name Silk where she met her husband Greg Leakes, who was a real estate investor at the time. They got married in 1997 and had their son Brent in 1999. They also have Greg's children from his previous marriage as well as Nini's older son. Nini always had dreams of being an actress and she got her first break in 2003 when she landed a minor role in the film The Fighting Temptations that starred Cuba Gooding Jr. and Beyonce. She met the producers of The Real Housewives of Atlanta through a casting director who was impressed by her charisma and confidence. She joined this show in 2008 along with four other women. Nene Leakes quickly became the breakout star of the show with her outspoken personality, her witty one-liners, and her memorable catchphrases. She was not afraid to speak her mind, confront her co-stars, and throw shade. Some of her iconic quotes include, I'm very rich B. Blue, an old child the ghetto. That one's my favorite. And she also had a knack for making funny faces. Nene is always making funny faces, which even added more to her appeal. But with these things, Nini instantly became a fan favorite and a ratings magnet, thus increasing her own personal wealth as that of the network as well. But how was this possible? What was it about those one-liners, funny faces, and gestures that caused so much of an appeal? One of the things that most brands, politicians, celebrities, influencers, and creators yearn for is to stay on top of mind of their audience or the general public. I mean, people and brands have gone to extra lengths to stay in the news or be talked about on social media. From obviously manufactured controversies, to creators faking illnesses or beefs to trend, to brands leveraging on public outrage to be in the news, everything seems strategic and part of an elaborate marketing plan. But Nene Leakes, on the other hand, did not seem to have any deliberate strategy to market herself or her brand. From what I saw, she was just being herself, expressing her opinions, emotions, and humor in her own unique way. And unknowingly, she managed to stay on the news and social media without even trying. And here's what I mean. Earlier on, I mentioned Nene's love of using witty one-liners, catchphrases for different situations she finds herself in, like the I am the glue for my week and my family. She said this in an interview to describe her role as a wife, a mother, and a breadwinner. She, this soundbite shows her sense of humor, self-awareness, and pride. And then there's this other one, I said what I said, which she said to um, Candy when they were in a disagreement. And then there's this one that I love, when she said, now how did I get into this? This was said when her name was brought up in a disagreement between her co-stars were having a disagreement and she didn't even need to be there and she said that. Now, let me tell you why this worked. Well, in the book Contagious, Why Things Catch On, Joanna Berger stated that one of the key factors that make ideas spread faster is emotion. He said, when we care, we share. In other words, when we feel strongly about something, we are more likely to pass it on to others. Nene was very good at eliciting emotions with her catchphrases. Whether it was laughter, anger, sympathy, or admiration, she made people strongly feel something that they would instantly want to voice it out to people close to them or on social media. 
what made these catchphrases even stronger was that the way they were coined. I don't know if Nini knew this, but there's so many public speaking techniques in them. Like one of them is contrast. She often contrasted herself with others as she said, I don't keep up with the Joneses. I am the Joneses. She's using contrast and that works really well in public speaking. Another thing is repetition. She repeated certain words or sounds and they had this rhythm. Every time they really said bloop or bloop, like you just want to say it yourself. Another thing is surprise. Nina will shock you with her statements because you wouldn't even expect it from her. Such as when she said, oh, child, the ghetto. I was like, what? She said. Or when she said, I said what I said. You know, all of these things elicit some sort of emotion that you just want to hear. And obviously, the humor. Nene is very, very funny. She is very funny. And because some of most of her sound bites are funny, people want to share that. And the formal marketing name for this is sound bites, like I've said. And sound bites are short and catchy phrases or statements that capture the essence of a message or a point of view. They are often used by politicians, celebrities, and media personalities to attract attention, influence public opinion, and create memorable moments. But for Linetia, this was just a way of life. You could tell she came up with this stuff off the cuff and she could dish them out anywhere, no matter whatever the situation is. However, just having catchphrases does not make someone an icon. As an icon is a person or thing widely admired especially by having great influence or significance in a particular area. So let's talk about Nini's influence on pop culture. And yes, that was accidental too. If you use any social media or even any communication app like WhatsApp, you know that memes are part of daily interactions. We use them every day to express how we feel, throw subliminals at other people, or even educate people sometimes. So to capitalize on this phenomenon, brands started doing meme marketing. Meme marketing is the use of memes to promote a brand narrative, connect with your audience, and increase engagement using humor as the primary mode of communication. So memes can be images, videos, texts that are copied and modified, you know, and changed and everything. But one thing about memes, they are a form of viral content and they can reach millions of people in a matter of hours. Now, let me tell you this. Go anywhere that you get memes from, be it Instagram stories, WhatsApp gifts, or Twitter gifts. Go anywhere. I can guarantee you that you will find a bunch of Nene Leaks memes right there. And she's not the one creating these memes. They all came from her iconic catchphrases and her facial expressions, like I've said it uh, uh, earlier. Basically, Nene just being Nene. My favorite one has to be the one of her running. That. <laughs> That one cannot be outdoor, nearly just running. I can't even remember what she was going for a marathon or something and just her running and everything. It just makes me laugh every time I see it, no matter what. Linitia is really a cultural icon because when she was on TV, which was before the rise of TikTok and Instagram, it was not popular to be yourself in code. People acted perfectly, but not nearly. She was herself. And I believe that as a result of this, she opened the door for other people to embrace their true authentic selves and express it without fear of judgment or ridicule. She made it possible for other celebrities to come in and be like, no, I'm not going to go through this manufactured brand or everything that people have manufactured already and put me in. I'm just going to be myself. And this authenticity resonated with audiences who saw Nini a reflection of their own experiences, emotions, and aspirations. Her influence extended beyond the confines of the television screen, inspiring a new generation of celebrities, like I've said, content creators now, and public figures who thrive on authenticity. These individuals, much as Nene, are themselves. We see that already people who don't conform to anything, they're just herself. And I feel like Nene played a part in that and that her legacy is evident in the rise of these authentic, relatable public figures who, like her, use their platforms to inspire, entertain, and educate with their audience on a deeper level. So in conclusion, Neely had an impact on pop culture, and it extends far beyond her memorable memes. She has, in essence, paved the way for a new era of authenticity in the public eye. Her influence will undoubtedly continue for, to be felt for generations to come. In her own words, she does not keep with the Genesis. She is the Genesis.